45 measurements from one population had a sample mean of 11 with the sample standard deviation is 4 and the independent random sample of another one 50 measurement from a second population results sample mean of 13 with the standard deviation is 6 test the claim that the population means are different use a 5% level of significant in other words 95% confidence level so what we know about from here is we are going to construct or create a hypothesis test and claiming that the population means are different so we know something about population means so population mean 1 cannot be equal to population mean 2 we can we know this by the definition also we know the alpha here you go so i can put down the alpha right to the right side alpha is equal to 0 0.05 so this two is already known what else is known a random sample of 45 so let's put that all this in so n is equal to 45 and of course sample mean is 11 so sample mean this is 11 x bar is equal to 11 and standard deviation is equal to 4 so standard deviation is equal to 4 s is equal to 4 notice that we have another one here which is another sample which is a 50 so n is equal to 50 and we have sample mean another sample mean is 13 so that's 13 is the sample mean x bar is equal to 13 and we do have sample standard deviation which is 6 sample standard deviation which is 6 s is equal to 6 notice that if I put down n and it doesn't make sense they're similar so I have to make them somewhat lo different looking in other words because they are two independent sample one is not depending on another one outcome so I'm going to put all the subscript as a 1 1 1 and 2 2 2 so make sure this is drawn from two population so I'm going to put down it's going to be n1 n2 mean 1 mean 2 standard deviation 1 standard deviation 2 so now we know it looks different well since we are doing hypothesis test let's do the null hypothesis so how do you find the null hypothesis well there are four steps actually or five steps depending on the book some book use as a four steps some book uses five so step one is going to be null hypothesis an alternative hypothesis so how do we come up with a null hypothesis null hypothesis we are assuming that two population means are same first we have to believe the claim we have to believe whatever the claim so that is null we're going to say each sub zero null hypothesis colon mean one is equal to mean two in other words population mean one equal to population mean two or if i use a little bit of algebra i bring down everything to the left side and set equal to zero so i minus mean two in both side is going to give me mean one minus mean two is equal to zero so that's the null hypothesis that's how we declare null hypothesis we have to believe in we are assuming they're zero now alternative is going to be there is three option but we know that this is different so we don't have to worry about that this is a two-tail test so alternative is going to be basically i can do the same thing alternative is going to be h sub 1 or a i like a a for alternative some book uses one colon mean 1 not equal to mean 2 or i can say mean 1 minus mean 2 not equal to 0 that's that's the alternative hypothesis so population mean one time i say equal to zero another time population mean i say not equal to zero what is the reason the reason is here is given the hints they are different so that's a null and alternative hypothesis this is always true this way now next one is the very crucial one actually next one is the test statistics we have a, at least two tests z test and t test so which one we are using in this case so we are looking to the population standard deviation since population standard deviation is not given notice that i am going to write down here population standard deviation population standard deviation one and population standard deviation two not given not known 
So if our population standard deviation is not known, we use the Z test. Sorry, my apology. We use T test. So our step two is going to be test statistics. So which is going to be T test. So what is the formula for T test? T test is equal to. So we're going to have sample mean one minus sample mean two minus and we are assuming population mean equal to zero population mean one minus population mean two that's over standard error of the mean so variance one over n1 plus variance two over n2 this is the test statistic again we are using the test even though sample size is very large but we don't know the standard deviation population standard deviation is not known so therefore we cannot use the z test we are using the t test so we have pretty much everything we have everything we just have to flag we have x this is the mean two mean we take the difference and two standard deviation is given we plug it in we square it we get the variance and sample size is given so pretty much everything is given all we do is just substitute it here okay so if i substitute it here my mean one is going to be 11 minus 13 minus zero again this is going to be zero why because we are assuming they are equal so this is going to be zero it's coming just right from here so it's just zero it's just gone all right so what is the standard deviation on the bottom here or standard error of the mean on the bottom so s1 clearly 4 so 4 squared is 16 i can put a 16 over n1 which is 45 45 plus n variance 2 which is 6 squared is 36 over n2 in this case is 50 n2 is in this case is 50 if I put down in the calculator is going to approximately actually I put down approximate sign here is going to be approximately negative 1.9 to eight. I can actually get a little help with the calculator if I'm not sure how to substitute it. So I can have fraction 11 minus 13 and of course this is zero so I don't even have to put that in and I do second x square square root then I have a fraction so n over d 16 over 45 to the right plus same n over d 36 over 50 and enter so approximately negative 1.928 if it is z test i would round up to two decimal places because z table has two decimal maximum t value negative 1.928 i'm going to show you the p value and t value both approach then we're going to decide our we're going to have our decision then conclusion so let's find p value how do you find the p value p value we need a degree of freedom and then we go to the t table and look into this number and see it falls between which significant level then based on that we find the p value and t value we use the same degree of freedom with the alpha we go a little bit odd opposite way. so i'm going to show you both if you understand phi value you don't have to worry about the t value if you vice versa so let's take a look phi value no matter what we need a degree of freedom so how do we find the degree of freedom degree of freedom is basically n minus one in this case there is a two sample so which n we use or is are we using both of them since this is not a full test we are not using both sample we usually use, we, we in this case we're going to use a smaller sample so which is 45 so we're going to do 45 minus 1 45 minus 1 which is 44 
and you will see it's not going to make much difference here in terms of the decision so degree of freedom is 44 then we're going to go to the t table we're going to go to the t table based on that this is the degree of freedom so 44 you're going to go and there's a different looking t table so this is a t table as you see down here this is one and that's a two tail that's one tail this is one one kind one table and we're going to look into the number inside some of you may see this table here this is technically the same thing actually technically the same thing so this is also critical values for student t distribution so we are looking for p value we are not looking for t value right now so we need a degree of freedom we know we have a 45 minus 1 is 44 so i go down all the way to 44 clearly i don't see 44 but i do have a 45 closest and since our test statistics is negative 1.928 is down here negative 1.928 in this line in this line which number falling negative 1.928 so seems like is is between here is down here so it's between these two then we're going to go down and check it out what alpha we are going to get actually out of this one here so you're going to go all the way up all the way up all the way up and notice that this is a two tail and this is one tail so we're not going to go one tail we're going to go down here two tail here so this seems like 10 percent to five percent or i would say five percent to ten percent so that's basically our fee value five percent to ten percent so i'm going to put down the fee value here p value 0 0.05 0 0.2 0 0.10 so that's a fee value this point is p value and notice that our alpha is also same place here alpha is also same place so we have our fee value between these two now if i use a different formula is a basically technically same thing down here so we go same thing here two decimal i'm sorry 45 as you see that's the 45 and negative one point is falling down here as you see so i go all the way up same way i go all the way up is basically two tail and is look same thing five percent to ten percent okay so we understand how to find this okay t p value so that's p value now i'm going to show you the t value how to find the t value t value is basically your degree of freedom and alpha alpha is equal to 0 0.05 and degree of freedom we already know 44 and it's going to be two tails so plus and minus so same thing we do here in this case we are going with the alpha this time we are going with the alpha that's the alpha here is with this relationship so 0 0.05 and 44 we are going from backward this time so we are not using that let's erase this one here so in this case we are using let me use the other formula table. 44 so why is the 44 so 44 down here i can make it much smaller 44 down here and we go all the way up zero point of course obviously i'm going to move this one zero point zero no this one zero point zero five i want to make sure you all understand here so well, i don't need this one here i'm stressing this one up here i'm stressing down here and that is going to be my the important fees we are looking for this time it's just opposite way of doing fee value we go inside t value we go outside and that's the fee in t value plus and minus 2.014 plus and minus 2.014 so plus and minus 2.014 that is the critical value critical value let's take a look here how do we come up with a decision actually how do we come up with a decision so decision is going to be since 
three value is not greater than well if this is what it is actually if phi is greater than alpha do not reject the null hypothesis so in this case p value is 0 0.05 to 0 0.10 0 0.05 to 5 percent to 10 percent on the other side alpha is just that so phi value is greater than alpha so if phi value is greater than alpha do not reject the null hypothesis so do not reject the null hypothesis do not r is a city reject null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis fail to reject f a i l fail to reject null hypothesis you can see it like that also now in order to you know come up with a decision with the critical value approach let's take a look here critical value approach so we need a vertical sorry horizontal line this line then i'm going to draw a curve let's take a look here draw a curve and i know right in the middle is going to be my mean right in the middle is going to be my mean and of course we are looking for this is the critical value that's the critical t value so we go one to 2.4 I'm going to come up with here that's 2.014 that's a plus and negative 1 negative 2 and also here negative 2.014 this in here that's the critical reason that's the critical reason because this is a two-tailed test now if my test the test I took this test is falling inside here somewhere somewhere here so therefore we fail to reject the null hypothesis if if my test falls inside the critical reason we fail to reject keep it accept the null hypothesis so if if this test somehow fall outside on the left or on the right side of the critical reason we just reject it so we just reject it now we just keep the null hypothesis we fail to we do not reject it in other word so fail to reject let's take a look and write this down fail to fil fail to reject r is a c t reject null hypothesis so our conclusion is going to be basically very straightforward simple our conclusion is going to be just this one very straightforward conclusion only one thing exceptional so at five percent so why is 5%? Because alpha is 0 0.05. Alpha is 0 0.05. So we say at 5% significant level, data if poll inside does not provide, does not provide sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. And we just skip the last sentence. We just skip the last sentence from here to claim that the population means are different so that would be always the last sentence here we just put that last sentence in here to claim that population means are different that's how we come up with a conclusion to interpretation at five percent significant level whatever is the alpha you just convert into percentage and if fall inside you said does not provide sufficient evidence or fall outside does provide sufficient evidence to claim that proportion if you use fee value if you if we use fee value as you see down here we clearly see this fee value is 5 to 10 percent and we have a um, we have a 5 percent threshold so it's actually if your fee value is greater than 5 percent threshold so it's not outlier actually it's not outlier it's still inside so therefore we fail to reject the null hypothesis in other words do not reject the null hypothesis that's how we come up with a hypothesis test for two independent sample thank you